If I had a time machine and could go back to younger, shopaholic, non-minimalist me, this is what I'd say. I wasn't always a minimalist. In fact, I very much used to be quite the shopaholic and would cling onto my things, shove things to the backs of cupboards after one use and try not to think about the guilt or the money I'd spent on yet another impulse purchase. All that stuff, the stuff that I clung to in worries I couldn't let the memories go, or the things I kept well past their prime, clothes that I piled up high in my wardrobe that I tried my best to stop it all from falling on my head as I opened up the doors. It all cost me an excessive amount of time money, peace and freedom. I just didn't quite know it yet. So if I had a time machine and could go back to younger me, this is what I'd say. I wish I'd heard these messages sooner, although I'm glad they found their way to me over the years, through trial and error and getting to know the world and myself a little better. Here's what I'd say to younger me. You're buying things with the hours of your life. The more you buy, the more you want. The more you want, the more you'll need to work hours of your life to pay for the things you're decluttering now. Once I realized I was buying things with the very real hours of my life, this was a turning point for me. It's when I started to sit up a little straighter and realize time was money and money was time. And I'd rather not spend my life working longer and longer hours to accumulate the latest trends or the fanciest home decor that just collects dust and are out of style the next season. I'd rather not spend all my time making money just to spend every last cent on things I didn't even love, just for the thrill of shopping and novelty of having something new. If I could go back to 10 years from now, I tell Jess from the past, you're buying things with the hours of your life. It has slot things into perspective. Some things are worth it, don't get me wrong, but some really, really aren't. I'd pour us both a steaming hot cup of tea and she'd look at me with saucer white eyes and ask what else should she know. She'd rush to whip out a notepad and pen because after all, she's me. The second thing I'd let little me know is that the high or excitement you get from adding things to your car is short lived. It's an expensive hobby or habit to have, shopping for fun. It's nothing compared to the peace you feel from entering an uncluttered, unburdened room in your home with progress little by little towards an emergency fund in your bank account for when life gets turned upside down. I'd let her know shopping becomes a way to deal with the stresses of life at first, but it builds to become its own very real problem. I'd say to be mindful, the excitement of adding things to your card is short-lived. She'd nod and ask, what next? And I'd move to number three. You don't need to hold on to the things tied up with memories you don't need to be reminded of hurt or unfinished projects or how your skinny motivation genes in your wardrobe make you feel deflated. Things are not our memories, they don't die with the item. There were certainly pieces I held on to tightly because I was scared of letting go of the memories, good or bad. But our things are not our memories and you don't need to hold on to them. At this point, younger me would be sitting forward, drinking in every word as I sip my tea because these are the things I hadn't yet let myself think about. I'd say to her, no amount of shopping is going to make the stress go away. And that would hit deep. Shopping in the long term when it's fueled by stress actually just makes things worse. You'll become more stressed about all the money you've spent, all the clutter filling your home, all the things to manage and tidy, all the things you can't find in a pinch because you're pushing things aside physically and emotionally. No amount of shopping makes the stress go away it just ends up doing the opposite. Resolve would start to set in as I utter my next words. Letting go is hard, but clinging all the time is harder. The energy it takes to keep holding on to stuff that no longer serves you can be exhausting. There's a weightlessness that comes from decluttering your home and simplifying your schedule, your relationships, your commitments, and your life. Yes, it's hard to let go of things that once served you, even if they no longer do now, but the mental, physical, financial, and time cost of not letting it go is far costlier. Letting go is hard, yes, but it's temporary. Holding on to stuff is a constant effort, day upon day, and it's tiring. It's harder to hold on to stuff than it is to let it go. Every single thing you buy demands your energy in one way or another eventually. Whether it's now or in a year or two, whether it's through adding to your own already growing list of to-dos, expanding your cleaning time during your precious and limited free times on the weekends, every single thing you buy demands your energy. So choose wisely and make sure it's worth it. By now, younger me would be grabbing out highlighters and making sure to scribble down notes of the most important things. It's a message from me to me 
me after all, and the time machine is whirring back up. And with the last few sips of lukewarm tea, I'd whisper my final thing I traveled so far to share. There is freedom in letting go. There's freedom to be found in letting the things, the physical things with the difficult memories tangled up, the shopping habit and the always overcommitted schedule and disproportionate amount of effort to people and things that didn't quite deserve that much of me. There is freedom in letting go. These are the things I wish I could go back in time and tell younger shopaholic me. If you're where I was or finding yourself overwhelmed by the inertia of an over-consumerist and work-obsessed life, I hope hearing these things lights a spark of hope or inspiration or thought that more stuff isn't always the answer. There's more in less. More time, more money, more energy, more peace and more freedom. There's freedom and clarity in not accumulating excess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>